Right, uh, welcome back to the workshop. Um, uh, with things being as they are in the world at the moment, um, I'm, um, I'm, I'm, what's the word for it? Socially isolating, shall we say. Um, I can't go into the Heritage Centre to do what they need to do, so I'm doing it here. Uh, and I thought, well, while I'm here, we'll go into a little bit of detail about some of the uh, instruments that's on board the aircraft. In particular, um, the uh, angular position indicators and mechanisms, better known as the DESIN system. Now, all the stuff I'm about to say on this video uh, is out of this document here. Okay. Uh, I think that's fairly noticeable. Okay, it's MOD. It's a, it's, it's a, from the um, from the a, it's a copy of the AP. Uh, Ministry of Defence DESIN, DESIN position indicator system and general and technical information. Um, it also has the illustrated parts catalog and repair and reconditioning. Now, this dates from. Uh, it was originally first printed uh, by the looks of it uh, quite some time ago. Uh, we'll see when we go into the history in a minute. Uh, but uh, this is an update from May 2016. Yeah? So it's still relevant. Bear that in mind with what you're about to see. It's still relevant. Maybe not in modern aircraft so much, um, but certainly uh, in some of the ones that are, say, 20, 30 years old. And there's still some of those around. So without further ado, we'll get on with it. So I'll just put this bit of paper down. And I do have a script for this one. So you'll have to bear with me. Okay, so... Um, back in the the old string bag days um when it was a bit hit and miss uh things like um you weren't interested in the position of your flaps or where your ailerons were or whether your undercarriage retracted because it was fixed so you weren't bothered about that uh your fuel gauge was usually um, a mechanical thing um on the end of an arm in the tank and that um, that read onto a gauge mechanically uh, it's all analog well this is all analog anyway but mechanically and um either that or it would be uh, if you like a pipe coming out the side the tank it down with a level on it um, a bit like what you get suppose in central heating um bun tanks and i've got one out there it's got a big long pipe down the side and it's clear and you can see where the level of the fuel is same sort of thing you've seen it on what i've seen it on i've seen it on some vehicles before anyway so <clears throat> as aircraft increased in size it became necessary to get a remote indication of the angular position of the flaps ailerons the retractable undercarriage if it was fitted and the petrol float mechanisms yeah because if you've got a tank that's 15 feet away in your wing, um, you can't have a 15 foot mechanical linkage to your little gauge because it's just not accurate enough uh, and it's prone to failure. Okay, now these instruments normally be for the pilot, um, co-pilot might, might have a set. Uh, the engineer certainly would. He'd possibly be the main guy who would be interested in certainly in the fuel. Okay. So the design type system and repeater motor were developed, and it says here 1937, so just prior to, uh, to World War II. Um, and they were the only devices at the time, bear in mind, at the time, there are modern ways of doing it now, uh, capable of catering for the transmission of unrestricted rotation. So it'll do a full 360 and possibly further. Um, there are other systems as well as the DESIN system. You've got the uh, mag slip or M type, uh, which is quite the uh, MBS guys out there. If you watch this, you'll be quite conversant with uh, with uh, with M transmitters. Uh, they were all over uh, the um, nav bomb computing systems. I'm thinking here, Calc two uh, and various other boxes uh, had them in. Okay, so. <clears throat> Moving on, so the Smith's Aviation Division 
made remote instruments which operated on the DESI principle. This is an electrically operated I'll try again. This is electrically operated, being available for 12 or 24 volts and gives readings which are independent of voltage fluctuations and a clear and also gives a clear indication of supply failure. So when you lose your power supply, your needle doesn't or it, or it just flops down. Uh, we'll see that when we come to uh, when we come to do the test. because I've got the test kit here. Um, OK. <clears throat> The equipment consists of two units joined by a five core cable, which can be of considerable length. Uh, yes, it can. Uh, when you consider, I'm trying to think how far out uh, the number three tank is on the Lancaster on the wingtip there. It's a long way out, especially if you're going from the port side across to the engineer's panel, which is the other side of the fuselage. Uh, it is quite a distance and they do work. Um, it's a very low current, low torque system, and it's very, very simple. Right, so roughly around about now, when I start talking in a minute, uh, we're going to be seeing uh, possibly my face replaced by a diagram. But I have the diagram here anyway, just in case this system doesn't work. Okay, so we're going to be talking about this baby here. Okay, particularly this bit here now so I'll fold this in okay so what we've got here right is a toroidal resistor wire wound I'll show you one in a minute um, and that is tapped off in 120 degree increments okay onto that is a double-ended wiper okay that has the positive on one end and the negative return on the other so across those two points there 24 volts in this instance uh, as shown in the diagram there that center winder a wiper okay is rotated by the drive mechanism uh, now that could be um, a little geared lever as in the uh, flap as in the uh, flap transmitters which we've got some down there um, or it could be uh, from the direct drive from the fuel sender um, the float mechanism and that's the one I'm going to show you here I don't have a fuel sender here um, I, there are quite rare and to find one in good condition and I don't want to bring away uh, one of the good ones and now what we've also got down here is the stuff I've got here is here to be tested okay it's not just gas kit it's here to be tested so that's what we're working at so anyway so I'll show you one of these now okay and then we'll go on and we'll talk about how it works in, it's in my little box. Oh, there we go. Okay. So this is the baby. Okay. Show it up to the camera. Okay. So we've got the wire round resistor. We've got the two taps off it. Okay. And they rotate. There's a little driving, a little peg goes in there. I don't know whether you can see it or not. A little peg goes in there. And that drives that round. Okay. So as that's been driven round, okay at each one of these points um, the voltage is going to fluctuate okay you're going to have three phases coming off here if you like three phases of dc well it's rotating uh, i suppose it helps to think of it as three phases um you might think you you might find it that way so did i have that upside down last time no i didn't i know full get on with it right um so as the wiper rotates yeah so the voltage on these outputs is going to fluctuate between plus 24 volts in this instance and zero volts yeah and each line is going to be 120 is each line is going to be 120 degrees from the next one Okay, so one is 120 from two, two is 120 from three, 
and 3 is 120 from 1. Okay. So as it rotates, so the voltage is out, output, voltage is out, oh, my teeth don't fit, uh, are going to fluctuate as well. Right. If you can, if you can think about that. So, uh, right. Okay. So we talked about the transmitter. Uh, I know it's, um, if you're not into, elect if you're not into, uh, electrics and electronics you might find this goes way over your head but i'm doing my best to keep it simple for you right so on the receiver okay you've got three windings okay and it's wound in a star configuration right so you've got your three windings and they join in the middle i think yes they do they're all they're all joined together in the middle on this diagram okay and in the middle there is a permanent magnet now that permanent magnet is let me just move this over here is connected to your pointer right so as these voltages fluctuate so this magnet's going to rotate if this here is voltage decreases this voltage increases so the magnetic flux here is going to weaken here it's going to get stronger and it's going to pull that north pole round okay. and likewise this is getting weaker still so it's going to pull the south pole round okay we got that okay so the flux the magnetic fluxes in here are going to fluctuate with the voltages okay and so as they fluctuate so the magnet will move round so the needle will move round and what we have when it's all set up is that system there like it says five core cable okay so it's five cores out to the transmitter because the transmitter needs the voltage to it um, coming back from the transmitter through to the indicator is only three cores. So where, the, where that normally goes is this will be powered from the engineer's panel. Uh, it'll go out to the transmitter through here from the engineer's panel, and then it'll come back along these wires to the engineer's panel with the indicator on it. Um, and what I've been dealing a lot with just recently is the fuel system, uh, the fuel gauges and whatnot. Haven't got any gauges here, uh, but you can, you'll you'll see when you see the tests that work in it, it might all sort of suddenly go bing and, and work okay so any questions good we'll carry on so what we'll do now is we'll just uh, i'll take a break in transmission and i'll uh, set up for the next one by the moment 